What's up YouTube, Eugenius here, joined by my fellow perfume snobs. I've got Christo and a special guest that's joining us from Chicago. Well, kind of from Toronto. A I former Toronto, Toronto boy. Yeah, yeah used to be a But he's back, he's visiting us, he's attending school in the US, so... And he reached out and he's like, been watching us for a while and uh, asked to meet up and... I thought, yeah, why not, you know? So and he did say he'd bring some perfume for us to sniff. He so. brought a lot of perfume that neither Crystal and I have smelled. Oh, I've seen. Yeah, I've never been in the same room with. So he was really generous. He he sent us his his um, wardrobe from Base Notes or for Granica. Base Notes. And I was like, wow. I noticed that we have very similar tastes in a lot of things, but I've never smelled this, 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 this. And he's brought like a 40 kilogram bag. Yeah, it was heavy. Worth about $60,000 in high end luxury perfume. So when I was crossing the border, the uh, security guy, the border patrol guy was like, Do you have anything that you're bringing in? Gifts or alcohol products? I was like, Oh my God, a lot of alcohol back there, but no, no. Yeah, it's not for drinking. It's not for drinking. It's not for drinking. Did you actually say yeah. that? <laughs> man. Did he understand? Yeah, Did he go through your he bag? Was, uh, he was like, Do you have to open it? I was like, No, man, it's just perfume. Wow. Wow. Well, for example, like we're going to be doing a separate video, and here is Diagolev, and I just did a quick sniff, and I was like, wow. I think you're going to go down and storm by it. Yeah, you know, I, who knows what's going to happen. Like, the rabbit hole gets bigger and longer, and we'll see. And that's not even the most exclusive thing. Like, that's not even the, like, not even close to the rarest thing. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that you guys will get to see in the in the next video or in the next couple days. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a send of the day, obviously this one. Then we'll do like a recorded video with us testing. Yeah. And then we'll just do a live stream that you'll obviously see before this or likely see before this. Yeah. Um, so look for those because I honestly, maybe some of the um, Histoire de Parfums I've tried but I don't think I've, oh no, in the Dover Street, but I told them to bring that for you yeah. to try. I don't think I've tried anything on that table before. And these are all things that I've had highly on my must sniff list. And then, you know, when I saw your wardrobe, I was like, wow, this, 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 I, I'm dying to smell. I even thought of like several times of blind buying some of these things. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. I mean, you got some stuff back there from Frederick Mall that I'm really looking for. Yeah, that you can try out as yeah, well. Yeah. So that's awesome. You know, really cool. For some guys that have you sitting on the sofa, they charge you 75 bucks for it and call it Scent Explore, right? And then charge you another 75 to hang out with them afterwards, but... Well, we've got an invoice rolling for them. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is way better. Anyway, being the guest, Carr, go ahead, share us uh, your scent of the day. All right, so I got, I got Queer Canage from Dior. Um, yeah, it's just one of my favorite leathers, probably top five. Um, it's light. I find days where I don't want to wear my crew to I feel like quirk and I just different enough, but still similar enough to where I get that feeling and not that heaviness. I was talking about yeah. it the other day and I was saying like, I really like queer canage cause I find it just really uplifting. Yeah. And it's got like, yeah, queer to is kind of, it's darker. It's a little more austere, but mm -hmm. like I find that it's just so much, it's kind of bubbly and sparkling and yeah. it's I don't got know that it's like, the lime in it or something, mm -hmm. but it's just like that. That what that's what pops off my skin mm -hmm. more than anything else. That and the violet is it violet iris? Yeah, iris. Ends up quite, I get iris quite myself. mentholated for me, and they really? both have that. I don't get any really, I don't right in the opening. No. Wow. I get kind of an aldehydic, bubbly, sparkly yeah, aldehydic opening. Yeah. yeah. Well, they both got similar leather profiles, so they do. I, I see. I can see the similarities yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. But it's great. I agree. I think that I so kind of controversially I said. I think I prefer this to uh, Queer d'Ange from Hermès. Oh, really? Um, I think so, but just because Queer d'Ange goes sour on me, mm -hmm. and this doesn't. Okay. I like Queer d'Ange for its salty aspects. Yeah. And to me, it's like a real queer. Not that Queer Canage isn't, but uh, I think Queer d'Ange really stands out on its own apart from a lot of other leathers. Well, I'd, see, I'd say Queer Canage, and it makes sense because of, you know, when it was made, but I guess Queer Canage is new too, but it does smell like a classic, uh, a modern interpretation of a classic leather. Whereas, like, Queer de Rossi is, like, just genuine, bona fide 1920s, 1930s leather. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. through and through. Yeah. But, um, no, I like it. I think it's, in my opinion, 
one of, if not the best things that's in the yeah, Dior. Yeah, a special place for me. pre Because I, I bought this in Vegas on one of those trips. And one of those trips. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> what stays in Vegas. Yeah. What, what happens in Vegas. Yeah. Yes, sir. But you can never not have enough leathers in your collection no, you as can. an enthusiast. So. Yeah. yeah. As long as they're done right. Most, most leathers are welcome in my collection. Okay. Crystal. So I'm wearing, I'm disappointed Eugene didn't pick this up. Um, so I'm wearing uh, Shams Oud by Memo. Now, I wore this for a couple reasons, um, mostly because I just can't wear this to work. Um, I work too closely with, you know, other staff, and I do come in contact with uh, customers, and it sit, like, my desk is in an area that's kind of in the area of customers, and this is really... Strange. I don't know. It, it's loud, but not quite as loud as like African leather. Uh, maybe just because African leather clashes so bad with me. Um, I but can't stand that one. yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan either. I like like I was just like saying that. something about all leathers are welcome in my collection, <laughs> as long as they're not from this brand. Memo. The first ten seconds are nice of African leather. I just find it like one dimensional, not much depth. I think uh, that's very loud and obnoxious yeah. and bro-ish. Yeah. That's you know? the house in general. Yeah, and that kind of runs throughout most of their perfumes. Yeah. They have one that's really feminine, floral, kind of tuberose. I don't know the name of it. Okay. But it's actually, it's decent. For I had a one I got for my wife, Lollibella, I believe it's called. It's like a really soft, light, I don't think it's a tuberose, but like a light white floral, maybe jasmine. And it's, okay. it's very unassuming. Mm -hmm. But I think it's part of the initial release. You know, like when a house launches, they release like six fragrances at once. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of see where they go from there. I think it was one of the original fragrances they launched. So it's very different than, you know, the African leather and the Irish leather and Italian leather mm -hmm. and the French leather. And um, But yeah, I also wore this as a test to see if Eugene could recognize it. And I, he, I he recognized it, but he couldn't place what it was. Have you tried it? Give it a spray. I like it. I've tried everything from Memo several times. This is the only thing that ever stood out to me, but it stood out a lot. And I've worn quite a lot of it, and I still really enjoy it. Um, I get, like, a smoldering campfire. Yeah. At, like, not even, like, the fire, but, like, just the smoldering embers after a while. It's not bad. I like it. So I've, I've sprayed it several times. I don't think I've ever worn it, worn mm -hmm. it, but... I mean, do you want to get into, like, the Thierry Wasser event? When well, yeah, we'll mention it quickly. So, like, the reason I, you know, wore it again to see if Eugene could spot it was because he infamously, without me knowing what you were going to say, he mentioned in a, in a video we did after we met Thierry Wasser, just very bluntly said it smelled like fishy vagina. Yeah. And I laughed. Because <laughs> I had no idea he was going to say that, and then it's kind of every time I talk about this, the fishy vagina comes up. I remember being at the event, and I was like, "Who didn't wash?" Because it's just like it smells like day old cooch with like some, some salt, <laughs> yeah, insemination <laughs> in there. <laughs> and uh, I had no idea it was coming from you, but until like you know, you walk by, I'm like, "There it is again." Yeah. <laughs> Now, I, I, I didn't get that, but once you said it, there is that, um, I think it's ginger oil in the opening. That, it's like canned sardines. It, exactly. And you said that, and it's like, okay, I get that. I yeah. get that more than... But yeah. once it dried down, it was like, ugh. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, go on. So I went with... So yesterday I wore Boy Chanel mm -hmm. from the Les Exclusives, and today I went with... Um, music for a while, another lavender-based perfume. And when I reviewed this, I was quite critical of it because it was really sweet. And I think, you know, now I'm wearing it, it's, it's much less sweet, it's more dry. And I'm thinking it's almost like when I wore it and reviewed it, it was in the warmer summer months. Yeah. And my skin was really pulling out those sweet notes. Uh, sugar, pineapple, caramel the ethyl maltol, you know, that cotton candy vibe, and I didn't like it at all, but... So I so, asked you what you were wearing, because I could smell it in the uh, LCBO. Did you find it sweet? 
I, I got the toffee. I got like some kind of sweet toffee. Yeah. But it was nice. It wasn't overbearing. It was nice. Yeah. So it's funny because so when we met, um, I was in the Starbucks waiting for Eugene to come in. And, and as soon as he walked in, I was like, I know what you're wearing. Like, I don't even think we said anything. I was like, I know what you're wearing. You know, like, what is it? And I was like, give me a minute. I need to process it. And it smelled so familiar. And I kept trying to place it. And I was like, is it? And it's really interesting. Like, I was like, is it a terror flanker? Like, terror der mess flanker? Yeah. And you're like, no, it's not. I was like, Really? Because I think it might be like ISOE and the pineapple in there that yeah, I mistook like, for like the yeah. the kind of rotting some, like, orange in there as well, like some rooty earthiness. Yeah, there's definitely a, like a a green tinge, maybe mm-hmm. some some kind of orange, maybe mm-hmm. a mandarin mm-hmm. to give it that you yeah. know that spikiness. But yeah. I love boy. I like this a little bit less. Boy isn't as exciting as this. I really like the textures in here. There's a lot of that gritty um, lavender and patchouli, which I love. If it was a little bit less toned down with the sweetness, I'd appreciate it much. More. So, is there a connection between them, or just because they're you both yesterday? like? I, I want. I was reaching for lavenders because the weather's okay. really nice. Actually, it's mm-hmm. not like we're in almost December and it's not like freezing cold out. And I was like, I can still wear some lavender. So, it's gray and miserable, but it's warm. It's it, yeah. It's you know warm you for this time. Any hint of French lover from that? No French lover. No, I don't. I mean, they're both woody fragrances, but this is much more sweet and less spicy. Oh, there's something in there. Is that something you picked up or something you've heard? Yeah, I picked up. Hmm. Yeah. So I love Boy for its like fougere qualities, and this it's got lavender, but I don't get that that coumarin, you know, those touches to, uh, that would make mm-hmm. it a fougere. But it's still, you know, an excellent lavender patchouli. I put a little bit of a dent in it, yeah. It's mall. I wear what I love. Yeah, I love some mall. Okay, so anything else? I guess we got lots of uh, content to get up there, so. We've got lots to test. We've got some rojas and. Oh, yeah. His cord of parfums. Some arige. Mm hmm. Yeah, some ouds. Some. Artisanal ouds, which will be interesting. Yeah. Hopefully, nice and skanky. Yeah, I, 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 I think I saw uh, Atars in there too. Nice uh, Fougere Royale, which I'm really excited to that's, smell. That's the Fougere. Like that's, that's right. That's it's, yeah, it's actually the perfume version of it too. So that's the newer release. So no, no. So it's like the like. Oh, I don't know if it's new. I think 2010. Okay, right. Because the original Fougere Royale is like that's like yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. So, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Cool.